Okay, sorry, sorry. sorry. So as you are aware, because of uh, the COVID issue, one of us had upgraded and uh, we had to uh, continue our, uh, whatever activities that we were doing physically, we started doing virtually using the computer. We were using WhatsApp to share, or we were using the Google Meet, or we were using various other uh, network sharing facilities in order to reach to the students. So what used to happen is it was uh, the totally in an unstructured way uh, we were handling uh, the say teaching, collecting of the assignments and evaluation. But on the other hand, it is not just delivering the notes in PDF format or in the Word format or in PowerPoint or recording and sending the videos. So these are all, uh, say, using different uh, internet sharing methods and social media, we were able to do it. But there is a professional way in which we will be able to handle all these things in a systematic way. So that platform, in other words, is called as the learning management system. So from the student perspective, uh, you're going to see over here, that the learning management system, you can call it, or teaching management system, in diff two different perspectives, we will be able to call it. From a teacher's point of view, it is teaching management system. From a student perspective point of view, it is a learning management system. So it is a software application, or we will be able to make it as a web-based technology. Very specifically, uh, this platform is used to plan, implement, and assess a specific learning process. So uh, instead of doing things in a very haphazard way, evaluating and uh, delivering of the lectures in the form of PDF, PPT, Word document, or video lectures, using various uh, methods, uh, in sending the messages to the students. So these are all unstructured way of uh, delivering the things. So if we have to deliver the content and evaluation and learning, uh, we it has to be done in a very systematic way. There we have to use a pla platform. We have to use a software called as the learning management system software. So specifically, you have heard about uh, the e-learning practices are very uh, common method. Now, so many uh, portals are there and so many commercial bodies have come into the field, just like Vedantam, Baijus, and so Coursera, Linda. So these are the different uh, uh, e-learning platforms or e-learning portals that we will be able to utilize. So on the other hand, as per the college or university curriculum, as per that particular paper, or in other words, we are going to call it as a course, in a very structured way, in a single window, in a single software, the syllabus should be available to the student. The lectures, video uh, files should be available to the student. And at the same time, the evaluation process also has to be done in the same platform. So for all this, whatever in physically in the all these 30 years, what we were doing physically in the classroom, physically standing in a classroom using a blackboard and delivering the content to the students. The only difference over here, instead of physically doing all these teaching activities and evaluation activities, we are going to do it using a software. So specifically, and uh, uh, the yeah. LMS module contains uh, two technical components. That is a server that performs uh, the base functionality and a user interface that is operated by instructors, students, and administrators. So what, what are the, uh, say, hardware and the technicality that goes in the development of, uh, in today's scenario, you will be able to use the cloud servers, not necessary that every institution should have a, their own server and that has to be web enabled. So uh, a server can be a cloud server or it can be a physical server in an institution. And it should have a user interface uh, for the, teachers to upload their content and uh, teaching recordings. And at the same time, students must be able to log into this interface and they will be able to access 
the material hosted by the teacher. And also there has to be administrators. If there is any technical problem arises in an institution, uh, the administrator or a server admin uh, should be able to solve it. So typically uh, the LMS is a uh, learning platform uh, provides an instructor with an easy way to create and deliver the content. And another most important part is a monitor student participation and assess student performance. So in other words, all of us are aware that uh, all these activities, delivering the content physically, we, will, we were standing in the classroom and we were delivering the lectures and uh, periodical internal assessment test or a semester end examination used to be conducted in the physical way. But only difference uh, using the LMS platform is all the classroom activities that we were doing, we have to do it using a software and using a computer. So deliver the content, monitor student participation and assess student performance. So these are the three components, assessing student performance and uh, say time to time evaluating whether he is seeing the lectures he has completely seen whether he has, uh, say, used the content uh, that is hosted. By any other means, if you are going to send uh, the notes and other video lecture means, we will not be able to monitor. Monitoring the student will not be there. So uh, a software platform is required where it is. we are able to do the content delivery, we are able to monitor the student participation, and also we will be able to say assess or conduct examination or conduct IA test through this platform only. So a learning management system may also provide students with ability to use interactive features such as a threaded discussion, just like how we are going to do face-to-face -face discussion with the students in the college by video conferencing or by using the whiteboard or the chat, we will be able to, in the LMS itself, we will be able to perform that function. So LMSs are very, uh, say, uh, five years back or four years back, uh, the learning management system is a very routine uh, facility that is used by uh, top software companies and other government agencies and local governments or traditional educational institutions, online or e-learning based institutions. So the system can improve traditional education method. So what is going to happen in a hybrid mode when we are going to give the LMS facility to the student, the performance is going to by research and by survey, uh, they have uh, very clearly, they have identified that uh, this can improve uh, the, say the performance of the student and understanding and also save organizations very critically. Uh, otherwise, you have to call an expert. Physically, he has to come. His TADA has to be given. So all this, uh, say, traveling and uh, the whatever expenditure, unnecessary expenditure that is going to come wherever the resource person is there from there itself, he will be able to uh, address the students and the study material can be delivered to the student. So this is an effective system will allow instructors and administrators to efficiently manage elements such as uh, user registration, uh, uh, say the course content can be uploaded over there and calendars, dates can be marked and what time, just like a timetable, academic timetable that we are going to do in our department. Similarly, uh, the teacher will be able to set uh, the calendar and the student will be well aware and user access communication certification and notification, all these activities that we were doing physically in an institution, we will be able to do it uh, specifically in a virtual mode or using the computer. So what exactly is, what are learning management systems used for? Why we have to use it in a professional way? So the learning management systems are beneficial to a wide uh, range of organizations, including higher education institutions and corporate companies. So the primary use of a learning management system is for knowledge management. You have to uh, critically train the students and at the same time, we have to keep a track uh, whether how they use the course material, how many videos they have, uh, say, gone through, 
and uh, really the uh, the whatever assignments we are going to give in time they have to submit the assignment so the knowledge management refers to gathering organizing sharing and analysis of organization's knowledge in terms of resources documents and people skill ultimately the school the student should be skilled the student should be made knowledgeable and he should be able to score good marks in the whatever course he has joined and he should be employable so however the specific role of uh, the lms will vary according to organization training strategy and goals so from organization to organization from institution to institution uh, whatever content and other uh, material evaluation and all those things and the resources that are provided to him can change not necessary that it has to be in a uniform way seeing the cross section of the students and what is the technicality of the course whether it is a education domain uh, program or a science domain program or a commerce domain program or a arts domain program and what activity the course requires accordingly the lms can be customized so uh, before i go further uh, some of the popular uh, lms especially with respect to educational uh, institutions or higher education institutions all over the world uh, people are using the first very uh, common uh, lms platform that is used is the moodle and then one more software is there called as the blackboard learn and the schoology and the popular enterprise level uh, lms include uh, the adobe captivate prime and then uh, docebo lms and then talent lms and the ispring learn and efred these are uh, totally from 6 months back uh, the scenario was different now more and more uh, say lms is coming into the market and uh, they are uh, highly com uh, compatible and uh, highly user friendly when compared to the earlier so this is how uh, the why the concept of lms came to what is the origin or uh, what made uh, the software companies to develop develop the lms is uh, the lms uh, before uh, the pandemic not much of educational institutions uh, were not using but uh, the mainly the lms was developed for employee training and onboarding when you are going to hire a one of the participants please uh, mute mute your microphone so the basically uh, the lms was targeted by the industries for onboarding the employees and uh, specifically the corporate environment uh, the lms was developed later on during the pre pandemic and also some of the open uh, universities Uh, they modified uh, they asked the software companies to provide with the lms and thereby uh, every university today for example if you are going to see our mysore university home page you are going to see a uh, lot of uh, video recordings and uh, the mooc and the uh, in the moodle platform you are going to see the course material that is available to the students so before going any further uh, i would like to show you i think all of you are familiar with this web page so this is one of the wonderful facility uh, that the government of karnataka is providing uh, for the undergraduate engineering diploma students from several disciplines so this is uh, called as karnataka lms so our strength and our future it has given over here and uh, the higher education department specifically you will be able to uh, say upload the content and assessment you will be able to do and performance analytics one will be able to do and a student will be able to log into this lms from anywhere any time and then he will be able to as per his uh, course that he is admitted he is going to get the material uh, from this board so lms uh, what exactly is it you will be able to see here lms based uh, based uh, digital learning and on in a novel initiative of the government of karnataka is a platform 
to revolutionize the teaching learning process by affecting uh, transformative changes in the delivery of content access and assessment. So this is the goal. Why we have to uh, say use a professionally developed LMS is this. And in a single window, a student will be able to type in his user ID and uh, uh, password. And exactly it is going to take to the material uh, that is needed for that particular semester where the student is studying. And in the, say the files are available in the form of PDF, in the form of PowerPoint, and also video lectures are uploaded. So thereby uh, we will be able to say that it is a comprehensive system which empowers teachers, enriches students and bridges the digital divide. And it provides power to access uh, to all uh, anytime and anywhere. So this is how you're going to see the Karnataka LMS very well developed. So you the teaching activity has to go on the teacher will be able to deliver his content through this software platform. And a student also who is the stakeholder, teacher and uh, the student who are the main uh, uh, stakeholders over here, a student also will be able to log into the loop and then he will be able to access the course material, reference notes and all those uh, information he will be able to get from here and he will be able to attend the virtual classes, video recordings. And then even the evaluation of the student can be done by uh, assessment in this platform itself. And there is scope for Im improvement. After one cycle, if a student feedback comes that something is not proper, something is not in clarity, something is confusing means always we will be able to go back and correct. The course material, uh, if there are any mistake, it can be corrected or some more additional information can be provided. So there is always uh, a, say a facility has to be given in the LMS for improvement. In other words, it is called as a corrective measure. So if you are going to come down over here, you will be able to see this uh, videos are there, PPT presentations are there, study material in the form of eBooks and uh, uh, PDF files are there. And then there are student is also having practice tests and MCQs over here. So what is the outcome? What is the goal a, a teacher will be able to provide is empowers teacher for effective delivery of the content. So from the teacher perspective, what is going to happen in a very meticulously planned way, the teacher will be able to deliver the content to the student. And uh, say, uh, as I said over here, as I showed here, there is always, uh, there should be room in the LMS for corrective measures. So that uh, feedback can be taken from the student. So feedback-based content upgradation. Something is not clear, con some concept is not uh, well uh, discussed or some concept is a little confusing means they'll be able to take the feedback and then they will be able to, in the next cycle, they will be able to improve the content. So analytical uh, input enhances uh, teaching effectiveness. So even uh, the improvement over the last delivery and analytical uh, inputs uh, is going to very specifically enhance the effectiveness of the uh, teaching. So from a student's perspective, how the LMS can be utilized and how LMS is beneficial is a very uh, broad choice of uh, content will be there. Or for example, in a particular college, a uh, very good teacher is there and whereas all other students uh, also can be benefited uh, by uh, listening to the video lectures of uh, that particular teacher from other organizations. So well-organized uh, learning resources. A student will be accessible to well-organized learning resources. What is well-organized? Uh, lecture videos are available and uh, the whatever uh, PowerPoint presentation that the teacher has used, that file is also available and the notes, running notes in study material or eBooks uh, can be provided to the student as per, as per the uh, curriculum of that particular paper. And also periodically uh, mock tests and uh, practice tests can be given to the student. So that is why broad choice of content, well-organized learning resources, assessment-based uh, self-appraisal of learning levels. And overall, what is going to happen when we are going to use the LMS in a hybrid mode, they're also going to attend the regular classes 
and they are also take, going to take the support of uh, the LMS, then what is going to happen? It revolutionizes uh, the teaching learning process, then healthy competition, uh, led uh, self-improvement, and also a freedom and access to best of the content we will be able to see and unlock uh, the true potential of every teacher. And <laughs> Please mute your microphone. So this is uh, the overall, what are the overall benefits of using a uh, LMS is unlock the potential of every teacher and student. A teacher is also highly potential and also a student also has got uh, the potential to perform better. So here, what is going to happen when appropriate uh, Tyler made and high quality material is given to the student then you are going to see, and who are the participants in this LMS? You can see here, nearly 531 uh, colleges have participated in the content development in this LMS. And you can see the nearly 430 uh, government uh, college and 14 engineering college, 87 polytechnic. And how many students are benefited? You will be able to see the statistics here itself. Nearly more than 4.5 lakh students are benefited. And how many uh, teachers are participating in the content delivery? You will be able to see here somewhere around 25,000 teachers are participating and 14 uh, universities have actively involved. So it is a completely a, a, a cloud-based LMS, multilingual, multiple languages there, offline, online accessibility is also provided. And there is an inbuilt online library uh, for the student to access uh, the books. And also there is discussion for. So this is uh, the facility uh, that is provided by the Karnataka government. And this platform, in other words, it is called as uh, Karnataka LMS. I'm sure most of you uh, in your group, uh, you might be the content developer and you are well aware about it. So then another major uh, source, 20 years uh, to 15 years back itself, uh, this particular facility. This I am showing from uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So therein they are going to have uh, the lecture notes are there. See here, if you are going to scroll down, this is the LMS of uh, MIT I am showing, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So here you are going to have the lecture notes. See here, how many teachers have contributed, assignments are available, projects are available, and exam, lecture videos, and then uh, the readings, and then the labs, and then recitations, tools, online textbooks, lecture audio, lecture video, tutorial uh, module is there in this, and then problem sets, active assignments, and then problem set with solutions, exam with solutions, and then return assignments. All these can be uploaded from the teacher side also, and also from the uh, student side also one will be able to have you can see here this is the page that i'm sh showing over here uh, nearly uh, more than uh, 15356 uh, uh, students have uploaded their uh, assignments over here so this is how uh, what exactly is uh, the lms uh, uh, how effectively it is being implemented especially uh, the MIT uh, has implemented it more than uh, uh, 10 years back itself and continuously they are doing R&D over it and they are improving. So this is how one will be able to use uh, the LMS and it is not just a theoretical aspect I'm not showing over here. Uh, the live use of uh, the LMS and if you're going to go to our university website also, uh, you are also going to see so many links are there or, or any IIT website or also uh, several universities, uh, they have actively adopted uh, the LMS. So in continuation with the uh, say points, so basically the LMS system was developed 10 years back for a corporate environment. Later on, it uh, transitioned uh, into uh, the schools, high schools, and also in higher education, a transition. So specifically, a learning management system can be 
thought of as a large repository that allows users to store and track information in one place. In a common English language, without any technicality, if I have to describe the LMSs, uh, specifically, this is a large uh, repository wherein the teachers and the students will be able to uh, share the course content, will be able to share their lecture, and the user with a secure login and password can access this. And also the system and its uh, online learning resources uh, can be highly secure, uh, protection can be given. And if the system is self-hosted, the user must either install the software in their hard drive or access it to the company server. So a company or your institutional server, you will be able to use it. Individually also, you will be able to have your own LMS. So at that time, you should be able to install the LMS software in your uh, personal computer or laptop. Or on the other hand, if it is an institutional level uh, LMS, you will be able to install either in cloud or you will be able to install in a local server of the organization. So what should be the facilities that should be available for a successful LMS? The responsive design. Users uh, should be able to access the LMS from whatever type of uh, device they choose. So what is the meaning of the sentences? Uh, some of the students we cannot uh, expect all the students to have uh, high-end uh, laptops or high-end desktops. So whatever uh, device that they are having, whatever uh, facility that they are having, only they will be able to log into the LMS. There should not be technical incompatibility with the device should not be there. Easily the LMS should be able to load in a smartphone and all with very minimum internet connection. Also a student should be able to log in from his mobile phone itself. So the devices can be desktop, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. So whatever is uh, the facility that is available to the student with not, without any technical problem, uh, he should be able to log into the LMS and LMS uh, should automatically display the version best suited for the user's uh, chosen device. So whatever uh, device that he is going to use, uh, students are going to come from uh, different backgrounds. We cannot expect always a uh, latest device uh, to be there with the student. So whatever is the level of uh, the device uh, the student is having and different types of device the student is having, uh, the LMS should be able to automatically load in that version uh, to that particular device without any technical glitch. So additionally, the LMS should also allow users to download content so that it is uh, accessible while he is offline. So some of the rural students or even uh, some of the students uh, where they're remotely located, if they are not having a high bandwidth internet, they will be able to come down to any of the cyber cafe or any of uh, the places where the signal is high and they will be able to download the content from the LMS and uh, they'll be able to use that content offline. So the facility should be available. So what is the first feature a LMS should have is responsive design. If a student is having a technical drawback in accessing the LMS means uh, the interest is going to go there itself and the very purpose of developing a LMS is going to fail. So what is the second most important uh, property that has to be there in the LMS is user-friendly interface. So the LMS should be, uh, you say the user interface, what we are going to call in computer language as the UI. UI should be friendly to the teachers also. The teacher also, he should not spend too much of time uh, in undergoing training and because uh, there will be a heterogeneous group of students and also heterogeneous group of uh, teachers will be there. Some of them will be tech savvy, some of them will not be tech savvy. So that with uh, <clears throat> very minimum knowledge of the computer also, a teacher and a student should be able to handle the interface. So that is why the very uh, second property that we are going to see, whatever I have given over here, it is the Hardware uh, restriction should not be there in this point, responsive design. So next comes, uh, who are the stakeholders? Who are the users? 
here the users are the students and here the users are the uh, teachers so they should not have any technical problem in uh, handling uh, the software so the user interface should enable learners to easily navigate the lms platform the ui should also align with the abilities and goals of both the user and the organization the unintuitive ui risk confusing or distracting the users uh, that will make the lms ineffective so the very purpose if you are going to make the user interface very complicated and uh, too many interfaces are there and a lot of technical uh, expertise needed uh, to handle the LMS means, uh, then what is going to happen? The LMS is going to fail there itself. The teachers are going to withdraw and they are going to say that uh, uh, it is uh, too difficult to upload or uh, not possible to upload all type of file formats. So uh, these are the routine uh, complaints that we are going to hear from the teachers, but that shouldn't happen. The teacher and the student uh, uh, should be comfortable with the user-friendly interface. Then what is the third feature the LMS should do? As I said in the beginning itself, sharing of the notes, sending the files, sending the PowerPoint files or sending the video files, you will be able to do by any of the social media that is available as on today. But that is not a professional way. There is one more activity. It is not just sharing of uh, the reading material or uh, our uh, videos to the student. There is the most important critical activity that we have to do is uh, reports and analytics. So what is the meaning of reports and analytics is uh, the e-learning assessment tool. Instructors and administrator must be able to view and track their online training initiatives to determine if they are effective or need uh, any modification. So both the teacher and the student and uh, the admin uh, or uh, the institutional heads, it can be, or the software or hardware maintenance technical persons. So all these people, they will be able to, uh, periodically they will be able to uh, extract report from the LMS and see which, which module is uh, highest user, which module is not at all used, which textbook people have utilized, which teacher's course material is uh, very much used, and which teacher's course material is not at all used, and what is the pr problem there. So all these things, uh, we will be able to generate the report, and based on this report, one will be able to modify and improve. So this can be applied to group of learners or individuals. So it can be for a single individual or it can be for the entire class, we will be able to moderate. So then uh, the another important uh, uh, property uh, facility that is required in LMS is the course and the catalog management. So just now I uh, showed the MIT web page over here, if you are able to recollect. See here, this is the MIT web page that I am showing. See here, in a single LMS platform, you are going to see all the information over here. This is called as the analytics. Still further, if you are going to go, for example, here 162 videos are uploaded in this particular course. We will be able to see this 162 videos that are present in the tutorial, how many times uh, that video is utilized. And student-wise also, we will be able to uh, evaluate whether a student has seen all the videos, or he has not seen the video at all, and for how many minutes he has seen the video. So all these uh, analytical statistical data we will be able to, and in a single interface, all the information that is needed for the student will be available. So this is what uh, specifically I'm telling over here is content course and content, uh, catalog management. So the LMS uh, software, is going to specifically uh, hold all the e-learning courses and the related course content. Admins, instructors should be able to create and manage this catalog and courses in order to deliver a more uh, targeted learning experience. So this is how uh, the course material and the list of uh, the courses, list of students, and even the statistics of how much they have utilized, how many hours, they have used the LMS. So in different perspectives, we will be able to uh, specifically evaluate. 
then content interoperability and integration content created and stored in an lms must be packaged in accordance uh, with uh, interoperable standards including uh, scorm and uh, x api so these are the very fundamental uh, softwares that was developed uh, in the american universities so thereby what is going to happen uh, the file format in which we are going to load to the lms should be compatible uh, it also they should be uh, say uh, if some other lms platform is changed then portability to that particular format uh, should be easy so a teacher need not redo the whole thing once again so like many industries and institutions before uh, uh, higher education has been an explosion of technical innovations and solutions in recent years if we are going to very critically look into the uh, development in the higher educational scenario in recent years we are going to see lot of uh, technical uh, innovations are there and ict enabled uh, learning is uh, and learning and teaching uh, is uh, almost uh, very common so from enrollment system to uh, the learning content fundraising platforms and more uh, the sheer number of tools available today uh, boggles uh, teachers mind also and also it is going to confuse uh, the much more the students so where to go which material for example you are going to see in television itself nearly there are around four duradarshan channels uh, that are dedicated swayam channels from uh, uh, say ninth standard fifth standard sixth standard uh, from that level itself uh, the duradarshan has uh, dedicated channels for the swayam learning so specifically this is a uh, say from a survey i have uh, taken Uh, according to the TechCrunch, is a very top-end uh, company uh, who have pioneered and uh, very experts in the LMS development. So they have uh, very specifically they have made a survey, and uh, what they say is a plan. Meticulous planning is needed. After planning, you have to implement it, assess a specific learning process. So the LMS should be highly user-friendly, as I said. the content uh, interoperability and integration should be there course and catalog management must be there report and analytics should be there and moreover uh, user friendliness of the software should be there and the hardware uh, there should not be any restriction with the hardware that it is now going to load only in the computer it is not going to load to the smartphone or uh, there should not be any device restriction the lms should be compatible with different types of operating system with different types of uh, Uh, soft uh, say the hardware or the devices the students are going to use so here i am giving the say specifically the survey conducted by this company the same pie chart what they have uh, say uh, done i am showing here from one of the papers so most college students uh, use a single mobile device during a uh, typical school day uh, period and only one in 10 use a three or more devices during the typical school day so at the school level say uh, till the sslc level most of the students 52% of students in india they are specifically having only one device but here 31% of the students across uh, the india they are having more than one device and uh, on the other hand 11% of the students they are having more than Uh, three to four devices. They may have a smartphone. They may have a tablet. They may have a laptop, and also they are also going to have a specifically a tablet. So this is how uh, more than uh, three to four devices uh, they are uh, possessing. Um, we have to though the six percent of the students is a very small compared to fifty two, thirty one, and eleven. still we have to concentrate on the 6 6% of the students who are not having any device at all so how will they access the lms if they are not having any uh, electronic device so this is where uh, we have to find a solution to them or uh, the educational institutions or government of uh, india or karnataka should bring the 6% of the students who are not having any device at all to log into lms otherwise uh, they will not be able to utilize uh, the facility of lms in their uh, learning process so this 6% has to be very critically it has to be addressed so specifically uh, 
uh, one of the students has uh, done very critical survey over here. So uh, what are the devices that are examined in order to arrive at this uh, particular pie chart? Uh, throughout uh, the report, uh, we mentioned various mobile devices. Below are the definitions and accompanying images that are provided in the survey. So whether a student is having a standard smartphone or whether he is having a, a sophisticated, uh, a quite large uh, smartphone, advanced smartphone, or whether a student uh, uh, is in the possession of a, a tablet or whether he is having a, a laptop or a desktop. So all this uh, survey one will be able to do and then one will be able to collect. So this is the school scenario, whatever pie chart uh, I showed over here, this is at the school level. But on the other hand, when you're going to come to the college level, you will be able to see here, uh, one in three college students considered themselves as early adopters of electronic device. So you will be able to see here, 10% of the students, I tend to wait long time to try any new technology. What is the attitude of the student? They, this 10% of the students, uh, they will be very cautious and they're going to see that whether uh, using the technology is worth or buying a new, uh, say, electronic device, is it uh, uh, useful? So they are going to wait for the market survey and they are going to see the trend and then only they are going to purchase. So, but on the other hand, here there are 36% of the students who are there. I'm among the first people to check out a new electronic device or gadget. The moment something new comes to the market, they will they are going to jump to utilize it. And then on the other hand, here you are having another group of students who are 55% um, major uh, share. So I usually wait uh, until I see others uh, try new technology and then I will try it myself. So this is uh, uh, the psychology of uh, the college students. And I'm not very sure that whether uh, they had taken the cross section of students, both from the urban and uh, the rural population, whether they are tested or not, or included in the data collection. I'm not very clear with the, uh, what is the cross section of students that were uh, say, uh, uh, user for the say survey. So more college students uh, in 2015 feel the tablets help them to perform better in the class. So instead of uh, smartphones, if they are provided with the tablets, uh, their uh, say tablet will perform the way college students will learn in the future. So they'll be able to easily load the books over there and very easily they will be able to browse through the course content. So this is how uh, I have also given the source over here. And again, uh, two in five students want to use mobile phone more often in the class. During class hours also, uh, the mentality of the students is uh, to use the mobile devices. So you are going to see the statistics over here. Uh, so what is uh, the attitude of the students? And then uh, specifically with all the tech savviness, why did I show all this? Uh, uh, statistics and survey information is uh, we have to take into consideration the psychology of the students has to be uh, taken into consideration and we have to deliver the content uh, in that platform only. So that is why, again, I'm repeating a robust uh, teaching learning platform that helps institutions to manage academic in a systematic manner by maintaining detailed records of classroom activities and enhances teacher-student collaboration with learning management system. So this is from an institutional perspective, not from a teacher perspective. So a college principal also can be a stakeholder over here. And if the LMS is institute, uh, say installed at the uh, institution level, uh, the whoever are the administrators, principals, or other uh, people who are managing the college, they will be able to, time to time, they will be able to log in and see the teacher performance and also evaluate the teacher performance. And also they will be able to evaluate individual student performance. So that is why it is called as a 
it is not just uh, teaching or not just learning so whatever physical activity that we were doing in the classroom teaching so the same thing we have to do with the software platform so here uh, specifically you are going to see over here uh, that uh, say the lms it, it, there has to be a robust uh, software platform documentation should be there and the courses has to be systematically uh, developed and the syllabus has to be uh, very critically looked into and uh, developed and there has to be a hardware and software system has to be there and uh, tracking of the performance of the teachers tracking of the performance of the students has to be done then ultimately you have to manage all this so that whether it is online learning or offline learning it has to be managed and uh, the e learning module in the e learning platform via the learning management system platform we have to educate the students so this is how these are the activities uh, that are required in the development of if we are if we have to develop a lms we have to keep in mind all these activities and then accordingly the lms has to be developed so specifically as i uh, said over here some of the features already i have yes so responsive design already i have discussed user friendly and interactive interface reporting data and analytics i have already discussed course catalog management i have discussed and then content integration that is interoperability and then uh, another most important parameter that you have to see over here is uh, if a student is going to face any technical problem there has to be a support service if a teacher is going to find some technical problem again a support service should be there in the lms and the certification and the compliance report and the support must be there and it need not be just black and white modules need not be there so certain say some of the concepts can be made into form of a quiz interactive quiz or any other time of gamification can be added but off late some of the professional learning management companies they are also say integrating artificial intelligence uh, into the lms so that if a student is uh, interested in uh, say let us say mathematics paper uh, some course he has taken and uh, he has uh, gone through the particular course content then automatically the lms will be able to suggest since you had gone through this particular module the additional module also is going to help you in better understanding so thereby uh, how when amazon uh, platform or in any other uh, e marketing or e commerce platform if you are seeing one product automatically related products are going to be listed over there so this that is because they have integrated ai uh, in the e commerce platform similarly now the latest L, uh, lms that is available in the market they have integrated uh, uh, in the platform the artificial intelligent service is also integrated over there so thereby it will be able to Uh, prompt uh, send uh, notification to the students or suggest uh, which book is better or uh, which is the most uh, widely used book depending upon the user statistics uh, from time to time a student uh, can be suggested by the software itself if ai platform is there in that lms so coming to the uh, main category of uh, lms as i said nearly 10 to 15 years back the lms was developed mainly for the corporate learning management system so now slowly in the past 5 years or 6 years we are also seeing that the lms is slowly transitioned into what was a corporate learning management system it was transitioned into a academic learning management system so these are the two broad classifications that we are going to see in the lms so here uh, specifically the learning management system there has to be a robust uh, specifically uh, say platform should be there and uh, specifically 
the tracking and reporting module should be very powerful in higher education and also in the school level. And all the records has to be maintained in the LMS itself. And then student performance evaluation also has to be done using the in the LMS platform itself. Then on the other hand, if a particular student is failing to open or if he has not opened uh, the lecture modules or video or any other uh, study material that is given to him means there should be a personalized communication should be there. So a teacher should be able to interact. For example, you are seeing in Baiju's uh, advertisement that one particular teacher uh, will be teaching and the other teacher will be responding to the individual queries of the students. So this is how uh, personalized at the personalized level, if a uh, student requires additional enforcement or additional teaching or some concept uh, he's having certain doubts means uh, a teacher should be able to personally communicate with the student and then uh, should be able to solve the problem. So then uh, report generation and f finally uh, the cost effectiveness, the cost effectiveness of the course, cost effectiveness in launching the LMS and also specifically from a student perspective also we have to see. So all these uh, technical uh, parameters or aspects in the development of the LMS and the adoption of the LMS in an institution, all these points has to be very critically looked into. So specifically uh, in continuation with uh, whatever I mentioned over here, so what exactly is needed is systematic record maintenance of student activities. So this is important because uh, the parents also is going to come and uh, uh, say they are going to meet the college authorities or the teachers who are handling the class. So thereby uh, uh, parents has to be shown uh, the student performance record uh, to the parents. So thereby there has to be a systematic record maintenance of student activity. Uh, it, should, it should not be deleted or there they sh they should not be any uh, say confusion or whatever analysis that is done, analytics that is done, it should be transparent and uh, both the students should be able to understand his level of performance and parents are also stakeholders. So parents also, uh, they should be able to see the performance of their children by logging into the LMS itself. So creating an effective syllabus and teaching plan. So these are, I'm going to skip all the administrative part of the LMS module as we are all teachers. So what is the perspective from which we have to look into the LMS is, we have to create a effective syllabus and teaching plan. A perfect blueprint has to be made how we are going to deliver the syllabus content to the students. So accord, accordingly, the e-content has to be developed and it should be highly relevant and advanced. Outdated uh, content, we should not give it to the students and it should be 100%, it should be relevant to the topics of the syllabus. So creating and conducting online tests and uh, assessments. So this has to be highly unbiased. It has to be highly accurate and for that the proper uh, uh, proofs uh, should be there and those proofs has to be uh, systematically maintained. In, that is why I have given the very first point as uh, systematic record maintenance and grading and tracking of uh, student progress and a strong uh, teacher and student collaboration is needed uh, for the success of the L LMS over here. So this is how uh, we have to very critically uh, look into uh, the feasibility and also for the effective implementation of the LMS. So how does the learning management uh, system works? What is the technicality that goes? So uh, if you are using a free uh, LMS uh, software means, then you are not going to have any technical support from anybody. You yourself should be knowledgeable and uh, you should uh, install the software and you yourself will be the admin. And then uh, you have to send the link uh, to all the students and who are the stakeholders. To all of them, you have to uh, make them as clients and uh, give them user ID and password. And uh, you have to 
maintain all these things by yourself individually. But if it is a commercial uh, LMS, then what is going to happen? 100% technical support will be given by the software company. Uh, they will be uh, the admin will be the uh, software company people will be there and uh, any uh, problem or any uh, specific uh, technical problem the teachers or the students are going to face uh, it they are going to uh, the admin uh, the professional software company admins are going to come into picture and uh, they are going to look into the problem and that problem will be solved by them if it is an open source LMS, maybe we ourselves has to uh, solve the problem. There won't be any technical support. Third party technical support will not be there. Then in the LMS, there also has to be a teacher login. So you have to plan your course curriculum and all those things. So in a university system or in a UG system, we are not going to have any freedom to plan the course. So whatever the university approved syllabus is there, that has to be taken and which paper you are using accordingly you have to uh, develop the content and assign the say specifically assignments and uh, you have to specifically see the students are going to submit the assignments and also the te test results uh, can be monitored and can be scheduled by the teacher's login so uh, specifically whatever activity that was done uh, face to face uh, the only difference is uh, you are doing it in an online mode. And uh, to some level, what we have seen here is uh, the hybrid mode. So even the physical interaction with the students and with the reinforcement of uh, the LMS, uh, really it has uh, made uh, learning little more better and the student performance also is better. So then the main st stakeholder is the teacher. The second main stakeholder of LMS is the student. So he should get uh, all the details pertaining to his course and uh, links to resources after logging in as a student. And then it will include the mechanism of uh, the software should provide a facility uh, to get in touch with the instructors or course director over here. So whatever assignments that are uh, provided, uh, he should be able to submit it through student uh, login portal. And the instructor or course uh, director uh, specifically should be able to access it and uh, should be able to evaluate. So what exactly is uh, the goal over here is uh, uh, create educational uh, workflow that makes a sense for different environments, including blended learning. Blended learning is a classical classroom teaching is also going to happen. And along with that reinforcement of the LMS facility is given. So collaborate uh, within the system, both instructor with students and students with uh, student. Student to student interaction is also possible. Instructor to student interaction facility also is possible in the LMS platform. Then uh, import, this is a standard international uh, format. So in the SCORUM compliant content from educational content producers, Create, administer, and uh, score the test. Evaluation is most important. Generate reports for student teachers and administrators. And also you can add parents over here. So since it was higher education, I have removed the parents over here. So uh, it should be a very transparent, uh, highly systematic uh, way activity. Uh, we have to do it in the LMS over here. What do you mean by, I have used a word over here, blended learning. And I have highlighted it also. So what is the meaning of blended learning is, uh, blended learning is another example of uh, LMS in education. So blended learning incorporates conventional uh, classroom teaching and online learning resources. Classroom teaching is also there for the student, but at the same time, uh, the student is also given a uh, secondary facility of online learning resources is also accessible to him. So wherever across the globe, when we are going to see, go through some of the papers uh, on uh, LMS, we are going to see that uh, this approach is more successful than simple face-to-face -face instruction since it enriches classroom experience with additional multimedia resources that can be personalized to suit uh, students' unique learning needs. So you will be able to highly customize it uh, topic-wise, 
you can customize it subject wise whatever way you want to customize it one will be able to customize along with regular classroom teaching so when you are going to add it additionally then the performance of the student has improved then one more uh, technical word i have used over here is whatever files that we are going to upload uh, it should be a uh, co or a scorm compatible what is the meaning of uh, scorm compatibility so what is the expansion of uh, scorm is shareable content object reference model so for example let me put it this way uh, today you are having one lms for this academic year in your college but something goes wrong with uh, the understanding between the software company and uh, uh, the institution uh, is not compliant so at that time the college may change uh, the lms so at that time what is going to happen if you are not there in a scorm compatible file format if you are whatever material you had created for the earlier ms uh, uh, say lms if it is not there when the lms is changed what is going to happen you may have to redo the whole thing once again because your files are not compatible with the next version of lms uh, that is installed some other lms uh, might be installed in your college for the next academic year so the previous year lms files you have to transport it you have to port it or portability we are going to use the word so that is why when uh, the this is a caution that i am giving it to the teachers so if you are using the lms over here all your video files audio files and also your uh, say specifically the uh, ppts or the pdf whatever type of files that you are going to use here it should be scorm compatible so thereby what is going to happen whether it is a web electronic educational technology or uh, specifically uh, from the uh, client and the host system uh, it, it should be portable very easily uh, and uh, very easily across the network you have to see that whatever files you are going to load in lms it should pass through the internet that is it should it should be transferred through the uh, network in a digital format and thereby the student should be able to open that file immediately with even with a very uh, low bandwidth internet so for that reason you have to save it in a transferable zip file format and then on the other hand automatically at the client end it should open unzip and it should open uh, the file should open so in that particular format uh, for the uh, sake of network transfer uh, the say the compression of the files has to be done the moment from the server only in the network the file is compressed but after reaching the client device uh, it should unzip and the file should be able to open so uh, that is that is why all over the world uh, the technical people of uh, uh, lms uh, companies software companies they are going to say that all the files that we are going to load in the lms platform Uh, should be of a shareable content object reference model compatible format so specifically uh, the easiest way uh, specifically done uh, by using simple uh, google apps we will be able to use and uh, we will be able to perform uh, we, do, we every time we don't require a very sophisticated lms so google classroom or uh, various other tools are available in the google app that itself we will be able to use a pilot project was conducted by pearson before uh, he uh, switched to uh, ebook uh, creation so how many people are tech savvy how many people are going to use the ebooks that survey they may so 8 in 10 college students regularly use a smartphone and when asked about their future use of mobile devices in class two in five student that is 40% of the students would like to use mobile technology so this is where what is going to happen when we are going to deliver the content uh, in uh, mobile compatible way or tablet compatible way then the whatever uh, say psychological makeup today you are going to see that every student uh, is glued to the mobile so use that device itself in order to train train them 
So something like uh, uh, create educational content uh, within the LMS. So it should not be very boring. You will be able to use colors. You can use graphics. You can use make the uh, content enrichment that we are going to call it. And also small gamification. Gamification in the sense, it need not be black and white uh, questions always. You fill in the blanks can be, you will be able to convert that, especially at the uh, high school level or at the pre-university level, uh, one will be able to uh, conduct the test in the form of a quiz or some sort of uh, minor, uh, say, intellectual games can be added over there. And uh, by playing that game, the student should be able to answer or solve the problem. So set, a, set and track individual students' goal. And uh, it is also possible on one-to-one -one phases, virtually, we will be able to take uh, live classes in the LMS platform itself. So what is the uh, very first software? Now I'm going to come to the uh, popular LMS that is used across the world. So the very first uh, software, uh, that is highly popular across the globe is uh, this is a, a premium uh, learning management system uh, LMS called as Blackboard. So you will be able to see over here, it is desktop compatible, tablet compatible and smartphone compatible. So this is a very robust uh, uh, software that you will be able to use uh, called as the Blackboard over here. So, uh, uh, Blackboard has uh, lead the premium LMS pack for a number of years now, and uh, certainly. So first, so first LMS software uh, that is of highest quality and all over the world, universities and other higher learning institutions they are using. So you can see here in the monitor a gentleman is delivering the lecture and uh, whoever is there, uh, they will be able to log in. And very critically on uh, virtually face-to-face, -face, we will be able to uh, say conduct the classes. And it is compatible with the mobile and also with the desktop, laptop, and with any type of device, uh, it, it, it is highly compatible. So the next software that I'm showing over here, the interface are shown here on the left. So it is called as uh, the uh, Schoology. So just like biology, sociology, it is called as uh, school, Schoology is uh, another full featured LMS. So specifically, uh, more, there are more number of clients to this software. This is also uh, specifically uh, the only LMS that connects your uh, campus solution, enables students and professors to communicate across uh, uh, the campus and also outside the campus also you will be able to connect to the students. So the third uh, rank on the, I have ordered the softwares, LMS softwares in the order of their ranking and uh, highest uh, say user uh, number, I have ranked it over here. So one more in the third position is uh, LMS called as a bright space. So this is again, uh, uh, we will be able to uh, say generate uh, different types of static statistical analysis uh, out of uh, the performance of the students we will be able to track. So specifically, uh, this is again a very robust uh, software. And also one uh, beauty that why I'm say mentioned this software is using this a professor can have content appear to a student only after certain conditions. A teacher will be able to put forth a condition have been met in such a turning in the material from the previous lesson. Only if he has studied unit one means then only he will be able to access unit two. If he has not uh, listened to the lectures of unit one, uh, unit two lectures will not be enabled to him. So this is how uh, in a real time monitoring, uh, we will be able to do it. And it is there in the market and it has undergone a lot of uh, R&D and uh, research uh, since uh, 1992. Uh, people are uh, utilizing this particular LMS in some of the uh, schools and uh, colleges and universities, European universities and American universities. So the next uh, very popular, uh, again in the fourth place, the software is called as the Canvas. 
So here, this is the dashboard of the canvas that I'm showing over here. So uh, the specifically very easy to use and uh, say specifically uh, the canvas is now uh, gaining momentum and most of the higher educational institutions, uh, they are utilizing it. And also before actual purchase of the software for nearly one or two months, we will be able to use this LMS for free. And then if we, if we are satisfied, then only we will be able to go for the final license. So that facility is also provided over here. So coming to whatever I mentioned so far, they are all commercial, uh, say uh, the LMS softwares. So where uh, we cannot in government bo uh, bodies and government universities and government colleges, uh, we will not be able to afford uh, to such uh, high cost uh, softwares. So what, then what is the alternative you will be able to see over here? So uh, the where the funding is not there or a financial crunch is there, uh, the state government universities or uh, the degree colleges run by government, uh, you will be able to go for uh, open source learning management, uh, free open source uh, softwares we will be able to use. So among that, uh, the topmost software that I have also personally used nearly from almost six to seven years, uh, I have continuously been using. So Moodle, Moodle is the popular and also you are having nearly around 1,300 uh, plugins are available as per the subject, what exactly we have to do, we will be able to, not necessary that we have to install all the 300, 1,300 plugins. So as per our, uh, whatever paper we are teaching, so what facilities we require for that particular paper content development, we will be able to use the plugins over here. This is absolutely free. Then one more software that is available is the Sakai, S-C-A-K-A-I. So this is the home page, very similar to that of an Excel sheet. This is the dashboard that I am showing. So this is again an open source LMS. Uh, and uh, specifically, this is also, again, you are going to have a lot of uh, uh, support APIs are available over here. And according to our requirement, we will be able to install the right API over here. Then one more uh, uh, platform, again, a premium platform is the Learn Dash. Learn Dash also is highly user-friendly. Individually also, we will be able to install or in a web interface, we will be able to use it. This is again, again, desktop compatible, smartphone compatible. It will load uh, in any device very, very easily. Then you have one more called as the Lifter LMS. So this is uh, what I said is uh, the today if we are going to see uh, the if we are going to uh, go query in Google LMS means nearly more than two to three dozen LMS are available, but uh, depending upon the subject and depending upon our requirement, we have to select the right type of LMS. So with this, uh, I conclude this session. If you have any question, you can discuss.